Lazy Bird, welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Today, we are continuing with the Titan questline story. Um, the last time we were here, we defeated all the Titans. We were able to heal up Mabossif, but the uh, professor, who appears to be Arvin's father, called us over to um, some area where we first met Arvin, which I think was way down here. So I'm trying to find that area. It's sort of weird with this map, but I think it's, yeah, over this way. So. That's for the Elite Four, that's for the Team Star. I think it was yeah, right down over here, Path of Legends, Poco Path. The lab on Poco Path. Head to the lab located at the base of the lighthouse on Poco Path. So what's gonna happen here? I have no clue, but luckily we can just simply fly over real easy. I think, yeah, we can just fly over, catch up with Arvin and see what's going on. Okay, we've made it to Poco Path. What can we do here? So, I don't see Arvin anywhere. Maybe he might be at the top of the of the tower. We couldn't go into here before. Oh wait, something's happening. I can't move. Yeah, this building. What is this about then? Oh, there's Arvin. Seriously, you beat me here? Maybe we flew over. Well, this is the lab. I used to come here to play all the time when I was a kid. There'd better be a good reason for calling us here like this. Let's find out. Everyone always says he's some kind of genius, absolutely brilliant as a Pokemon professor. My dad, that is. But let me tell you, as a parent, he's the worst. All he ever does is work. He never comes home. I don't have a single memory of him ever even playing with me, his own kid. But Bostiff's the only one who was there for me, always. Anyway, it's open now, go on in. Are you coming too, or are you just gonna stay outside? I just wanna get this over with. All right, well, we're going in. So what will Professor Turo want with us? Apparently hasn't seen their own kid, you know, Arvin, in years. Oh, it's it's very dusty in here. Hope you brought your allergy medication. It doesn't look like anyone's been in here in a long time. Whoa! Oh, hey, he's on the TV. I need your help. What could be wrong? Okay, I guess he's gonna tell us. I'm currently at the deepest point of Area Zero in the Great Crater of Paladea. So he's in the Great Crater right now. I've been researching the unique Pokemon here for a very long time. I'm asking the two of you to land a hand to help carry out the final step of the great Professor Turo's glorious research. The final step? But there is something we need first, something that can be found within that lab. What we need is the Violet Book. Isn't that the one that Arvin already had to find the Herba Mystica? Wait, do you mean this book? Ah, so you took it from the lab, did you, Arvin? Yeah, we did, it's been very useful. This expedites things. Bring the Violet Book to the deepest depths of the Area Zero. I promise that it will be an experience worth treasuring if you come. Huh, this seems pretty intense. I must note, however, that Area Zero is both home to vicious Pokemon and outfitted with powerful cybernetic security systems. It seems to me that you might struggle if the two of you were to enter alone. You may take the time to gather some reliable allies before you come, if you feel the need. I'll be waiting for you in the deepest part of Area Zero, whenever you arrive. Huh, so this might be pretty challenging. Area Zero. That place is bad news. It was down in Area Zero that Mabostev got wounded in the first place, down in the Great Crater of Paldea. In all honesty, I'd be perfectly happy to never see that place again. 
Are you gonna go? Of course I'm going to go. I suppose he did ask. And I just can't stand by and watch while a friend heads off into danger on his own. So I guess I'm going to. All right. Sides, I'd love to give Dad a peace of my mind. All right then, Zebra, outside. We're gonna have a Pokemon battle to see if we're really ready to head into Area Zero or not. Mostly to see if I'm ready or not. Let's go. Okay, so I guess this will be a bit more intense. Ooh. So is there anything we can do around here? We have the Battle Arvin right outside here, so we'll be doing that in just a moment. I'm curious to see what it says. Uh, Battle Arvin outside the lighthouse on the Poke Path. We'll do. Is there anything that we can like mess with? It's a mysterious device, better not touch it. <laughs> Looks like an arcade machine. And then what about over here? There's a picture book of books for kids. One of them tells a story about making a big sandwich. Aw. The fridge's door is too heavy to open. The shelf holds seasonings that are past their expiration date. So there's nothing really interesting that we can interact with here. So let's go battle Arvin. I hope we're ready for this. Will Arvin be super strong all of a sudden? Usually his Pokemon in the Titan battles are pretty weak. I guess we'll see for ourselves. He has his Mudbostiff now, so he might be much more difficult. All right, you ready for a battle, Zebra? Of course I am. Excellent. You ready too, right, Mudbostiff? That sounds like he's ready. Yep, Mabossif says he's ready. You're battling with Mabossif? Okay, yeah, I can see why you'd be worried. But my buddy here is bursting with energy. You'd never know he was so weak just a little while ago. Won't leave me alone. Always whining at me, wanting to battle you and your Pokemon. Oh, wow. It's been so long, I, I nearly forgot, but he always did love the battle. Even if we always lost to that student council girl. The battle fanatic one, so Nimona. All right then, so yeah, I'm ready to battle. Let's go for it. Anyway, my point is, there's no need to worry. We're a brand new Arvin and Mbostef, and we're feeling audacious, or maybe herbaceous? Let me give you a taste of what we can do. All right then, a battle's a battle. We are going against our good buddy Arvin. You're challenged by Pokemon trainer Arvin. And they have Greedon. All right. So I guess we'll be seeing some of the Pokemon that have joined us as we took on those Titan Pokemon. The Pokemon that I met during our hunt for the Herba Mystica are all stars, every one of them. So starting with a level 50, Greedon, pretty intense. We'll do close combat, which is obviously gonna work out pretty well for us. Nice. So there's Greedon down. We started with a pretty good advantage here, but what will they have next? Garganic Claw. Oh, this is the, mm, I think this is ground type. So let's try Floatzel really quickly and see if that does any good. So this is the evolution of Knackly and Knackle Stack. I haven't seen this one actually. Ooh, this is gonna be cool. Garganic Claw. Whoa, <laughs> it's like a pyramid. I like it, very cool. So we're gonna just do Surf, I think, for now. We'll see how much damage this does. Ooh, here we come. Oh, super effective, but not quite enough to take them out. They're using Stealth Rock, and that'll be a bit of an issue. One of students floating the air on our team. So this might hurt us a little bit, but we'll just still use Surf. There we go, super effective. The Garganical Fainted. There we go, lots of experience. Arvin is about to send out Toad Scroll. Uh, Toad Scroll is not gonna be like Tentacool, so it's not gonna be like weak to lightning. Let me just get Meowskarat out right now. Um, Cause I really don't know what typing this is, but it's the evolution of the one we saw before, right? Which was Toad's Cool. There's Toad's Cool and Toad's Scroll. I'm not entirely sure how this will work out, but we'll see for ourselves here. Whoa, it just stands on the tentacles. It's sort of creepy in that way, but we'll just do a flower trick. Will that work for us? Ooh, it is a critical, so like, no matter what, it's gonna do something. But they're gonna use Sludge Bomb against us, and that is super effective. This is where we gotta be a bit more concerned, but I think we can just do one more Flower Trick to defeat you. But you have a full set of six Pokemon here, so. Ooh, we got you. So, there's Toad Scroll down. 
What do you have next for us? Scovillian. Okay, Scovillian was the uh, grass fire type. So I think with that one, if we do tail and flame, we should be fine. We use our flying type moves and that should deal with them pretty well. All right, here we go. So skill villains coming out now. Whoa, whoa, we what? What just happened? Pointed stones. That did so much. That did a ton of damage. I wasn't expecting that, but we are able to do nearly a one-hit takedown. Fire blast is coming in. That shouldn't be very effective, but it still does a lot. So this is where I'm very concerned. We'll just do one last aerial ace, to finish you off, and that's good at the least. So we are still like, all of our Pokemon are still kicking here, which is great. And we get two level ups there. Once learned to move wave, this is not the best time, but sure, let's, let's shoot some wave crash. The user shrouds itself in water and slams into the target with its whole body to inflict damage. This also damages the user quite a lot. I don't know if I'll need that too much, but you know what, it might be like a good last sort of ditch effort, seeing how like that's 110, this is 120. It damages us, but it has 100% accuracy. So there's no more risk with that. So we'll just try this. So there we go. Now we know wave crash. Okay, so with that done, Cloyster. Okay, Cloyster is definitely going to be a water type. That's where we use Palm on. Okay, so here he comes. Good old Palmod. And I think with this one, we can just hit you with everything. We got a big discharge move. There it is. Which we, I don't know if we've seen all oh, the pointed stones again, but they don't do too much damage. I don't know if we've seen too much of Cloyster so far in this game, but boom, see you Cloyster. I'm not seeing too much of you now. Which means you have one more Pokemon left. It's the fabled Mabossif. Here it comes, we get three level ups. We're so ready for this. I wanna keep with our current Pokemon because Mabossif is a normal type, I think, right? So hopefully we can just use some kind of, you know, normal fighting move here. Let's see, yeah, close combat, super effective. Will this be a one hit takedown? Let's celebrate your full recovery with a glow up. Time to terrestrialize Mabossif. Uh oh, what will it terrestrialize into? This is a total surprise. Oh man, it could be anything. What is that? I don't know what typing that is. Uh, is it dark? I can't tell, it was still super effective though, so I guess we're fine. I think that's dark type? Huh, gonna use play rep on us though. Maybe it's fairy type, that is so hard to tell. It's not fairy type, the fairy type is the heart, so it must be dark type. Either way, they got rid of Palm out there, but we just need to finish you off a little bit more. Um, the best way to do that, obviously, we could do like U-turn here, but more than that, we can just get Dox Bun, who's at full health. They can handle it, no problem. It's gonna be dog versus dog here. <laughs> They're both too adorable, I can't choose. All right, let's use Play Rough then, and finish you off, no problem. Excellent, we did it. Okay, so Mabostip's gonna faint from that one, and we won our battle against Arvin. I'm so sorry, buddy, I hope you're feeling okay. There we go, we defeated Pokemon Trainer Arvin. We were so close, my boss, I'm so close, but Zebra, thanks, little buddy. Of course. It was a privilege battling you and my boss, Def. Dang, this is the strength of someone who could take down those Titan Pokemon, huh? Yeah, much as I hate to admit it, I do think we're gonna need some more support. The Pokemon in Area Zero are super strong, and there are all sorts of weird machines there, too. I'd say we need at least two more people. Somebody with some champion rank level skills and somebody who can deal with crazy tack. Maybe Nimona? The student council girl? Yeah, she'd be perfect for the job, but I doubt she'd give us a time of day unless one of us was on her level, as in champion rank level. So do I have to go do that first? But well, we've gotta do what we've gotta do. Whoever you think could be a help, just try getting in good with them. So was this supposed to be the last one I was supposed to do, not the first one? <laughs> we'll see if we can't get a team together. Get in touch if you make progress. I'll do the same. All right, so they'll work on that, and Path of Legends is being updated. Complete, so we, we technically have completed Path of Legends. Interesting. Well, 
we're here now. So that was pretty neat. If I take a look, I think that's what it, where it's gonna leave us, right? Where we're, at this point, we were supposed to go and complete the other one. So like, that's Path of Legends complete, then we would have to go to um, here and figure out um, everything with Starfall Street and then everything with Victory Road. So I think the Starfall Street ending we'll see next episode. For right now though, since we have a lot of time left over, now might be a great time just to sort of explore around, maybe do some Terror Raid battles, because I would really like the booster for Pokemon. So I think that's what we'll mostly focus on is like Terror Raid stuff. But I do see things like this. I don't know what this is, you know? So maybe now's a great time to learn about some things. Right now though, we'll start with some Terror Raids. Um, Cause you know, there's some more rare Pokemon we can find from those kind of things. And there might just be some Pokemon we find as we're running around. But I guess I should heal first now that I'm thinking about it. Cause our, our team is a bit beat up. Okay, so we're back here. I'm all healed up. We're at South Province Area 1. And like I said, there's so much of this game like off the beaten path we've yet to explore that we could maybe find a couple of things. And a lot of these are low level Pokemon, so fighting them might not be the best idea. It just might not be like a super duper worth our time. But if we see any new Pokemon, that's what I want to go for. So um, yeah, that's what we'll be looking around for for the most part. But I do see also you know, the, the terror raids, where we can get some easy experience candy and maybe find some new Pokemon that way as well. So that's another thing to sort of be on the lookout for. And if I see any just specific, like, you know, not terror raid Pokemon, or, you know, like the terror raids, but like just the Pokemon that are terrestrialized, that's also a good thing to focus on. So I think that's mostly what we'll just sort of focus on ironing out for now. We got Scuttlebug over here that I've already caught, but there's a ground type one right over this way. So let's see what this is. It looks like it's gonna be a three-star Rufflet battle. So I definitely wanna switch over to um, Floatzel, which is gonna be right over here on the bottom. And just doing things like this is really gonna boost our team up. Getting three or four stars, maybe, battles done is really going to make sure that we get a lot of experience candy out of that. Okay, so here we are with a three-star Rufflet, which is a Pokemon we've already had. So, you know, it's not too crazy to uh, battle it here for like, you know, actually catching the Pokemon. But like I said, the, the rewards themselves can be well worth it too. So we'll just do, what'll be the most damaging thing here? Besides, you know, Wave Crash, because that might end up hurting us. I'll save that if things are looking really rough. But for right now, we can just get rid of half of your health just like that. They're gonna use Tailwind on us. But at this rate, I might be able to actually just get rid of the rest of their health with one move with the, uh, the Wave Crash. Let's give that a try. Oh, definitely, definitely. We're about to win this whole thing just super quick. This is a three-star battle that we're just destroying right here. So whenever the typing advantage actually does fall in our favor with a Pokemon like this, you can see how good it is. So there we go. We're able to defeat Rufflet in no time at all, even with the, the huge recoil damage. Okay, so here are three-star rewards, some experience candy, and a lot of the Terra Shards, which I really don't even know what those do. I'll have to look into that a little bit more, but you know, I think that's definitely something, since we have some extra time in today's episode, I wanna do the terror raids. Maybe I will um, apply some of the feathers we've had. I've been meaning to do something with those for a long time. And also maybe go on some of the uh, the class lessons, even though I'm a little afraid of showing up around there, because I'm afraid that it is going to, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Whoops, okay, hold on. Uh, I'm afraid it's going to trigger the, the team star events. So maybe I'll save that for next episode. So I don't know if it'll be the same thing for the Team Star Challenge. It will just be I go and I battle someone and then it's over, like, or will I need something more? I'm not really sure. I don't know if I did this in the right order. That's a Wooper! Well, hold on, we get Air Slash, and there's a Wooper! I definitely wanna catch Wooper. That's a Paldean Wooper as well, which I think is a little bit different. So adorable, oh my gosh. So let's go ahead and get a Quick Ball out here so we can catch Wooper straight away. I would hope this is an easy catch, considering it's a level five Wooper. And there it is, awesome. I definitely love to see that. So obviously we're not gonna get much experience for running around here catching these level Pokemon, but getting them from my Pokedex is pretty huge. Number 53, Wooper, the poison fish Pokemon, poison ground type. It's the Paldean form, form of course, because it's, so it's a bit different, but that's so weird. It's dangerous for Wooper to travel alone. They line up in groups of three, to, three or four and help each other as they walk around the, the wetlands. That is so cool. So there we go, a Paldean Wooper. And that's another one for our nice little Pokedex here. And that's just what makes me so excited is that we're still finding and filling up more of our Pokedex. But we're gonna make our way to more of the Terror Raids wherever we'll get the chance to. If we find more Pokemon along the way, that's great too. So let's see what we get off over here. What is that? Okay, that's a Scuttlebug. There's not gonna be a ton of exciting new things, I don't think, but before I grab that, let's do this protect and 
we have one of the little tumbleweed Pokemon. For this one, I probably, it's it's gonna be a bug type. So I, I think we want Fletchinder, or not Fletchinder, Talonflame. That's what it used to be called. But this one's only two stars, so it should be a pretty easy one to take down. So here is our terastalized Tumbleweed, whatever this Pokemon is called, I already forgot. But it is a bug type technically, so using um, something like you know, our flying type moves should be fine. We'll just be able to use Aerial Ace here. And if I need to, I can Terrastalize, but getting rid of the Bramblin, which is what it's called, shouldn't be too difficult at all. One hit knockdown. That's what I'm talking about. So we'll get more experience candy and feathers from that one too. So yeah, we're really grinding up a lot of cool stuff here. So there's another one done. We get Bramblin, which is something we've had before. So I'm not too you know, crazy excited about that. It's mostly just about grinding up the nice rewards. So I will get this one which is just some potions. Yeah, the rewards around here that are just laying around might not be too exciting. Just some simpler things. What about, what is down here? Oh, it's the Diglets, the Wiglets, we already have those, but cool to see them, I guess. Little Wiglets is all over the place, but we arrived at our destination. It's going to be a Dragon-type Terror Raid. How many stars is this one? Just a one star, but it is not a Pseudo-Wudo, but the thing it evolves into, I forgot, uh, but it's dragon type, so I probably want to change actually back to Floatzel again because that ice type move will be really good against it. With it being only one star, it's a little bit underwhelming, but I just don't remember if we've actually caught this one or not, so I'll certainly give it a try. Okay, here we are with the uh, dragon type, what is it called? The Bonsai. And we'll just use one ice type move. I'm pretty sure this might even be a one hit takedown. Oh, there it is. Wonderful. So we've been really tearing up the uh, terror raid so far. I think we will. Oh, does it have a tiny? It has like the tiniest little sliver of health. I didn't even see that. I thought it was a one hit. It wasn't. But either way, we'll probably go to a more difficult area of the game to see if we can't find any cool um, terra areas or like terra things to do there. Um, but for right now, I want to catch this one for sure and then move on to the next thing. I also did notice while we're looking at the map that there is one more Pokemon Center I have not activated. I think this is the last one. I've been looking all around the map. I don't see any others that I've yet to do. So I just wanna make sure that they're all activated so we can get around the game more easily later. So let's work on this one. It, it, we're sort of as close as we can get to it as it is. So let's just work on getting over that way. So for that, of course, I wanna hop on to Maridon. Oh wait, no, I did the wrong thing. There you go, come on, can, can you climb up or are we stuck? There it is. I'm still getting used to controlling that, but... Oh, wait, there's Wingle, I think? We haven't caught you yet either, so taking advantages like that to catch even more new Pokemon is always great. I don't think we've seen Wingle in the game at all, like from any trainers or anything, so this is pretty cool. Let me go all the way back over here to get another quick ball, which once again, with how low level these Pokemon are, the catches really shouldn't be that difficult, I wouldn't think. And it's even a critical throw, so yeah, we got it. Okay, so there we go. Some extra experience, but really a tiny amount. It's, it's not gonna make any much of a difference a lot. But we get number 132, Wingle. The seagull Pokemon is a water flying type. It rides upon ocean winds as if it were a glider. In the winter, it hides food around its nest. Cool. So we'll send that to our box, and we'll keep moving forward. So that's right there, 132. I guess yeah, there's, there's a lot of Wingle along the coast. That would make a lot of sense. But there's some cool ruins up here too. Maybe there's like, whoa, whoa, the game's, the game's freezing on me. But maybe we can find some specific poke Pokemon around these kind of areas. We're finding more of those whoopers now. Oh, but you, I don't, I do not have you. That's for sure. So, but hey, <laughs> there's a uh, Flamigo wants my attention, but we want Drowsy instead. So this should be another easy catch for us. We'll toss out that quick ball. And we'll see if we can get it. Come on. Got it, so there we go. And if the quick balls don't work, I just switch over to nest balls, which are the lower the level, the higher the chance. And right now, that would be quite a high chance. So there we go, we get another new Pokemon, number 66, Drowsy. The hypnosis Pokemon um, is a psychic type. When it twitches its nose, it can tell where someone is sleeping and what that person is dreaming about. Whoa. That's maybe sort of scary. That goes right there, right before Hypno. I don't know if Drowsy evolves into Hypno, or if they're just sort of different and right next to each other. I think they might. Yeah, I'm glad to get that one. Oh, and there's a trainer out this way too. That's not gonna be fair for them. They're gonna have like level five Pokemon and we're just gonna destroy them. But I guess if we need to do it, right? You know, if we want, want to find like every trainer, I grab that really quickly and HP up is always nice. I do see a Gimme Ghoul coin. And also a TM, Confuse Rai. So I guess we'll take on this trainer really quickly. There's not anything else to do. That door was so weird. 
What door? I can't stop wondering what's behind that weird door, lid, or cover, or whatever it was. Maybe a battle will take my mind off of it. What door are they talking about? I'm not sure, but we have a, quite the audience as we go against Axel the student. A bunch of drowsy watching us. It's a little awkward. Squawk ability is our first Pokemon. And what's the level difference here? Uh, level seven, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This is hardly fair, but we gotcha. Oh my goodness. Are those Squawk ability down? That's the only Pokemon they had, so we're gonna move forward from that. Just what could be behind that? Whoa, wait, I lost? Yeah, you did. I know it happened really quick that, right? And a rock face passed here. There's a door, lid, or something that's chained shut. There was a faint light coming through it. I wonder what that could, what could be in there. Oh, you know, we saw one of those too. I'm still not entirely sure, so maybe we'll find out at some point later in the game. That'd be very cool. Anyways, I like to plop down right here and get a super potion. Um, there's even more stuff, so I'll grab some of that. But it really is quickly becoming that a lot of this stuff isn't even worth really going over for, I guess. I mean, extra attacks and stuff, those are good. Don't get me wrong, I just have plenty of a lot of this stuff. But getting more Pokeballs can be good too. It's interesting how much just stuff you can earn up by just running around from the game and not like, you know, earning up money and stuff, which is what we, we would normally do in Pokemon games. You just buy them with the money we earn on the adventure. Okay, I can get experience candy extra small there, but nice to have it. Let's make our way all the way up this cliff face to get to South Province Area 5. So I'm guessing the difficulty is gonna be jumped up a little bit here. I guess we'll see. We are seeing some uh, different Pokemon, I suppose. Oh, it's another one of these things. Okay, so wait, first we get this, two Pokeballs. So what is this one? This one's purple. We've seen some golden ones as well. There's an ominous black stake driven into the ground. Will you pull out the stake? Sure. We pulled up the stake, it crumbled and vanished. So that's another one of them. I'll grab that, the Iapapa Berry. And whoa, look at this. Okay, this is a Terra Houndstone. I don't know if I need to go for it right now because we already have some, but we're getting some higher level Pokemon around here for sure. That's the Gimme Ghoul coin. I'll take that one. Well, they're chasing me. I wonder what's that, like the island out there. That's, that's the kind of thing that definitely has me curious. I feel like I should, ooh, wait a minute. Oh, two new Pokemon right here. Let's go for you first. Yeah, I don't have either of these. So that's really lucky and really good. This is Shroomish. But I wanna go get the Pokemon Center first before I glide all the way out there because it's gonna be a bit of a pain to come back, I think. Got it. All right then, so Sh Shroomus was caught. So we're finding some Pokemon that we definitely missed on the first run through, because we wouldn't have gone out this far. Okay, number 106, Shroomus, the mushroom Pokemon is a grass type. If it senses danger, it scatters spores from the top of its head to protect itself. Cool. So we'll then send that to our boxes. And I'm pretty sure that'll evolve. But in the meantime, we have our other one here. This is the very adorable uh, Pachirisu. Gotcha. So we'll throw a quick ball at this one too, and I'm pretty sure it'll be another easy catch. Oh, it's even a critical throw. Got it. We're catching Pokemon like nobody's business. There's Pachirisu for us. And a tiny bit more. We're making a little bit more progress with the experience and stuff, right? Uh, number 201, Pachirisu, the Ella Squirrel Pokemon is electric type. A pair may be seen rubbing their cheek pouches together in an effort to share stored electricity. That is adorable. Okay, so we'll put that in our boxes for now. So cute, so that doesn't evolve. Interesting. But I will grab this one. You know what, maybe it's fine, because we can always climb back up. Oh, and is that it right there? Okay, never mind. If it's right there, then yeah, this is no problem. We'll just go glide over to this thing out of pure curiosity, and then, I mean, I hope I can get there. How far is like the distance you can go out into the ocean in this game? So it seems like I'm, you know, I'm sort of taking a nosedive with my gliding, but no, I can get over here. There's a trainer even. What are you doing out this way? Are you trapped? So there's not really any Pokemon. There might be some in the sky. I guess I saw the shadows of some. I can't really see them now. Huh. Well, I'll go up to you in just a moment. I just wanna see what else you can find here. A pearl string. A very large pearls that have silvery something to them. So that's nice. And we get Surf, which we already have. 
Isn't that the school where... Is there a woman named Miriam working at your school? She and I once worked together. Huh. I'm not sure, I'm not the best with names. You're challenged by Ni Nyara? Nyara the model. And they have Finian. So we can handle this no problem with Palmont. The question is, what level is it? 25, so actually not too much of a worry. What does he's discharged? Defeat it and move forward. So I wasn't expecting them way out this way. Are they trapped or are they just here? Maybe they're really good swimmers? Doesn't seem like much of a swimming outfit. Seems you're getting good at, a good at education. I definitely think we are. So let's talk to you really quickly. Miriam and I used to work together at a Pokemon Center once upon a time. Of course, we've each gone our, down our own paths, but I'm glad to hear she's still doing her best. That's great. Maybe that's one of the teachers or something? Anyways, as far as I can tell, whoa, that's so cute. I don't really need any of these Pokemon, but, whoa, wait a minute, I don't have you, the little heart-shaped Pokemon. That's gonna be a good one to grab. And there's a Basket Legion down there, I'm pretty sure I've gotten Basket Legion, but we'll see in just a moment. This is Love Disc. And will we get that easy catch? If not, I'm not too worried about it, there's plenty more around. <laughs> Look at that weasel, just, just swimming around. Well, we got Love Disc, no problem. And let's see the Pokedex entry for this one, number 332, Love Disc, the Rendezvous Pokemon is a water type. During the spawning season, countless Love Disc congregate at coral reefs, turning the waters pink. Wow. So there we go. Number 332, Love Disc. And then there was, what, like I said, Basket Legion around somewhere. It looks like it's left, but there's Broxic, Brox ish which we haven't caught yet. So this is our chance to do that. I definitely want to go for it. So we're finding some new Pokemon out here in the water. We've battled a couple of Bruxish. Such a hard one to pronounce, but haven't quite been able to catch it. Oh, and I see a couple new ones in the distance as well. Ah, oh, no! This one didn't work. I might throw another one. Ooh, that doesn't do very much. So let's try this again, another quick ball. I don't think a second turn quick ball is always the best, but it might be fine enough. We get a critical throw, so it will be. Very lucky with those recently. I don't know if the lower level Pokemon have a higher chance of those or something, but either way, happy to get that one. Number 335, Bruxish. The Nash Teeth Pokemon is a water psychic type. When sunlight reflects on the ripples created by a Bruxish's, a Bruxish grinding its teeth, the water all around the spark sparkles brilliantly. Whoa. Very cool Pokemon. Sort of creepy in some ways I can't describe. I, I really just, I don't know what it is about it, but either way, I'm glad to have it. And look over here. We have another Bruxish, but more than a Quillfish is one I've been trying to find. So, Quillfish, been caught off guard. We don't have this one caught, so let's just throw a quick ball. And I can only imagine this one will be an easy catch. But I guess we'll see, will this wouldn't be stubborn? Oh, it will be! Oh no. So, you know what, we'll throw a second quick ball. But I think if that doesn't work, we should probably just try a nest ball. With a level difference, it might just be a bit better. There it is, we get it anyways. So, Quilfus was caught. Let's see all about it then. Number 331, Quillfish, the balloon Pokemon, is a water poison type. Experienced fishers say they try to catch Quillfish in the brief moment that these Pokemon become defenseless just after launching poison spikes. Or are they trying to catch them if they're poisonous? <laughs> What's the benefit of that? Anyways, right there, 331. Something to find Cloyster. But I think I saw, ah, I might be gone now. The thing that evolves from Cloyster somewhere, that's Aracuda. But, I can't see it anymore. There's another Quillfish. Maybe if we keep swinging around, it'll pop back up. Oh, here it is, here it is. This thing evolves into Cloyster. Shelter. Come on, this has gotta be an easy catch, right? I would sure hope so. It is! All right then, so we get Shelter. So we're finding a lot of the sort of Pokedex neighbors. Oh, you know, a lot of ones where the numbers are right next to each other. And this is number 329, Shelter. The bivalve Pokemon is a water type. Clamping onto an opponent reveals its vulnerable parts, so it uses this move only as a last resort. Okay, very cool. 
So we need, we need to still find number 330. Hi, Weasel, you're so cute. I don't think there'll be too much out this way, but if we just keep swimming around, we might stumble upon other new things, so definitely keeping an eye out for it. But I'm mostly determined to get to this Pokemon Center so that this is just registered for us. It's a Magikarp. Nothing too exciting for that, but Sandy Gast is over this way. More Buizel. Just chilling out on the beach. Gimme Ghoul Coin. What about that TM over here? This is Sandstorm. More Pokemon are popping up, but no new ones. There's a lot of familiar faces. So, you right here, how many more battles are around here? Oh, there are my Pokemon League rep. I've been having some pretty nice, I have not battled anyone here in Area 5, I guess, the person on the island didn't count, but I gotta defeat seven of them to get a prize. Anyways, I'll heal my Pokemon. We might even sell some stuff just to make some easy money, but really, we're just trying to um, register this, this Pokemon Center. So I'm glad this is the last one, as far as I could tell, on the map that we needed to get. That'll make it so much more useful to get around the map if there's anywhere specific we need to go later on. Okay, so over this way, I would like to sell. Let's see how much money we can make with some of the you know, fancy, shiny things we've gotten. So we have things like tiny bamboo shoots, which were all over that one bamboo forest. I don't think there's anything we can do with these. Same thing with like everything in this section. So I think we can just bulk sell everything. And hopefully it'll make a bunch of money. There we go. Is that everything? That's everything. We'll make $73,000 from this. Wow. Mostly from the bamboo shoots, but some of the other stuff too. That's pretty cool. So let's sell all that. And we are going to be nearly 300,000 Poké Dollars. That is very useful. We'll definitely spend more of that soon, but I don't think I need it too much at the moment. So we're going to head back out and check out more of this island or this beach, really. But hey, here's some more of the trainers. Can I please get this? There it is. Potion. Um, whoa! Whoa, wait a minute. Shellos is in this game? I feel like we haven't really seen too much Shellos. So let's definitely grab this one. Very cute. So I'm guessing there'll be different forms of it running around. I think it's based on gender, but I can't quite remember. So let's see if we can't get that quick ball catch. Yes, we do. So there's Shellos for us too. All right then, so that's a pretty easy catch for sure. Number 327, Shellos the Sea Slug Pokemon is a water type, a part of the East Sea. So it's regional, but not like regional as in like the Paldean region, but more like regions within the region. I don't know how to explain it. This Pokemon can often be seen along seashores. It's capable of spending a limit, limited amount of time on land. We just caught it right that perfect time. So there we go. And you can see there's a pink version as well, which I guess we would get maybe from like a, the west part or something. Now I do have you, Pink Urchin. What about you? I do have Crabrawler. Okay, we're good with that then. I don't see anything else to worry about around here, so we'll grab some nice little goodies. A dive ball, and I wanna battle you. I wanna protect this beach. Sounds like a good idea. Beaches should definitely be protected. Hey, did I just catch you littering? I need to battle you to protect the beach. Well, actually, I was sort of doing the opposite of litter. I was finding stuff off of the ground to keep. Sophia the waitress. But hey, I do appreciate it. I agree that, you know, we gotta keep our, our nature clean and healthy. Can't be littering around it. Okay, so we're gonna battle you. Obviously, this is gonna be super easy for us because we're just way too low level. But hey, we should be getting some, you know, some amount of experience and, uh, money from it, so it can still be good. We'll keep with uh, Palmata, if they're gonna send out Ozumarill. Really cute one, though. So let's discharge. There we go. And what else do you have? Not too much just yet. Once it's now Gulpin. I think we're fine with this. Once again, we can just keep using the same move without too much of a risk of them actually being able to beat us. And this is the last Pokemon too, so we'll deal with that, no problem. I do think that we might wanna go on a picnic in today's episode, just because why not, you know? Um, there we go, we defeated Sophia the Waitress. They're not happy. Sorry about that, seems like I was mistaken. I mean, I could have been just littering and a, a stronger trainer. This is the secluded beach, one of the 10 sites of Paldea. It's not so secluded anymore with all the attention it's gotten as a tourist location. 
So this is the second one of the of the 10 locations of Paldea we found, because we found the, the highest altitude, and we got an experience candy L. Whoa, that's really useful. We don't find too many of those. Um, right here, we'll grab a gimme cool coin. One of the 10 sites of Paldea, nice. So we'll go right here, and we get a super potion, and then there's a TM waiting for us right on this side. After this, so we'll have a quick picnic. So there we go, we get bulk up. The user tenses his muscles and bulks up his body, boosting his attack and defense. I'm not seeing too many other new Pokemon. So yeah, let's have a nice picnic on the beach, right here. Oh, I gotta get off of Maraidon. Hold on. There you go, now we can picnic. Since we haven't done this in a long time, is it gonna let me? Oh, here we go. Uh, oh, it just took a second. So, here comes everybody. Since I haven't in a while, oh yeah, let's talk to our Pokemon, give them some pets. Some of them are snoozing like Oink alone. Use Yana on itself back there. This is so cute though, I love it. Everyone's having a nice little beach day. Hi. So we, we can throw a ball. Here we go, ready? Is it, oh there it goes. Go catch, go catch. Somebody's gonna get him a ride and steals it. Can I throw multiple balls? That'd be great, but I don't think I can. I can whistle for some of their attention. They'll all run over. Whoa, okay. Hi. Talk to town flame a little bit. But I think the thing we want the most is to make a nice sandwich, so. It's a picking set, what do you wanna do? A redecorate, choose a ball, pack up and go. I think we'll make a sandwich. They're kicking it around back there, that's fun. So what do we wanna make? We have a lot of options here, I guess, um, with our current, is are these the only recipes that we have? I suppose so. Um, obviously these will affect like what we run into, so we can do like a cheese sandwich here and find more bugs, water and steel type. Or we find more bugs, but we have raid power for water and experience point power for steel. I don't know why there aren't more sandwiches here. I guess I just need to buy them to get the recipe or something. But there's also creative mode where I can just sort of make my own. Um, we could try this, but I don't want to. I don't want to risk it being not so tasty. So I think I'll just make a sandwich from what it suggests. I don't remember what we've made before. Probably the ham sandwich. We could try them just the, the cheese sandwich. Cool. Okay, so. Red flag pick, okay. I'll use some of those. Cause we have a ton of ingredients at the moment. I think we'd be able to make more than this, right? I'd hope. Um, but here we go. Just going to pick up the cheese and put it down. Lots of cheese on this side. That's really all it is, isn't it? And then <laughs> put the bread on there. Okay, very simple sandwich, but I'm sure it's still a pretty tasty one. All done. So we'll eat this one up a little bit, and usually doing this kind of stuff ups our friendliness with our team, which can be really useful. Sometimes they will avoid attacks, they will avoid status effects, they'll fight through some of them. They might not even faint because they don't want us to be sad. We've seen that a lot more with some of the other games. Not too much with this one because I haven't been doing this too much, but let's definitely go ahead and eat this. So let's see, is our sandwich delicious? Does it hit the spot? I think it does. Excellent. All right then, so everybody gets to dig in on that. And the cheese sandwich is a three-star meal. Cool. So we get some extra numbers there. That's pretty cool. But I think we're good to um say hi to Palma. Hi, buddy. But uh, I think we're good to pack up and go. And we could choose a ball. Which one do you want to play with? Oh, I guess there's like different balls we can kick around. Okay, well that's good to know. But I don't, I don't really need too much of that. So. I'm good for now. Well, actually, no, that's not the right thing. <laughs> no, I don't, I'm clicking all the wrong buttons. So we get a little bit of experience from it too, which I, I didn't realize, but there's new Pokemon popping up. Let's take a look around the map. I think we wanna go take on some more um, raids. Oh, there, apparently there's a dolphin somewhere out here. It always says those kind of things and I can never find what it's saying is around. I really want the dolphin Pokemon. I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, there is a Clauncher. Oh, we don't have Clauncher. I thought we had Clauncher. No? Maybe it's in an evolution? I'm almost positive we called Clauncher in the last episode or a couple episodes ago. Huh. Well, I can definitely get this then. There you go, now I have Clauncher. Maybe I accidentally defeated it. it. It's been a minute, so. There's another one for us, Clauncher. Number 339 Clauncher, the water gun Pokemon, is a water type. Clauncher's claws will regrow if they fall off. The meat inside the claws is edible, but it has a distinct flavor that doesn't appeal to all tastes. Gotcha. Well, I have no intention of eating you, buddy, so don't worry about that. 
Maybe I'm thinking of another one, because that one, yeah, Clawitzer. That's what I was thinking of. So that was the evolution of this. Good to know. See, I'm not quite seeing a little dolphin Pokemon swim around here, but if we do find it, over there, over there, I want this. I really do. If we had called this one earlier, I would have even considered it being a part of our team, but it's a little too late for that now. I'm very attached to the Pokemon we've been, you know, playing with. The Finizen is so cool. I definitely want to catch you. Come on, come on, can we get an easy catch? We can, so Finizen was caught as well. Okay, so with Finison caught that's number 291, Finison the dolphin Pokemon, a water type. Its water ring is made from seawater mixed with a sticky fluid that Finison secretes from its blowhole. Oh my gosh, okay, interesting. This is so cool to see a little, you know, dolphin Pokemon. Surprised it took this long. Is there anything else here that's like new, a must have kind of deal? I don't think so, I'm not seeing anything on the map, but I'm glad we actually spotted something on the map went for it and actually found it. Oh no, now you want to fight, huh? I'm gonna run from the Aracuda. We, we don't really need it. So like I said before, let's take a look at the map and see what other Pokemon I might be able to find, or more than that, what other um, Terra Raids. So if there's like a couple over here, I think that's what we want to go for. I think what these are are the terrestrialized Pokemon that aren't in the raids, they're just sort of hanging out. So that's good to keep in mind. But it really doesn't matter the typing of the raid, because I'm not really gonna keep the Pokemon too much anyways. It just, you know, to get some extra experience and stuff and to um, maybe find some new Pokemon, if we're lucky. So here we are around here. I do see another new Pokemon that we haven't caught, but I, I do want to set this as our destination so I don't get too lost. And yeah, it'll be fun to sort of, have I caught this? What is this? Skiploon, I caught Skiploon. Never mind. thought it was new. It's not quite. That's okay. I mean, obviously we can throw some Pokemon out to fight them. But there are other trainers we can take on. I remember taking you on though, so I'm doubtful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it, they would have a sort of like a speech bubble over their head. I also want to take a closer look at the Tauros, because a few episodes ago we saw a new version of that Tauros I've never seen before, and it had like a different typing. I don't know if they just pop up or something, but look at these terror raids hanging out over here. This one is gonna be a three star. It's gonna be the Finizen we just caught. So I guess we were just destined to find it anyways. I have a palm out here. It'll be a perfect thing to go against it. So let's go for it. Okay, well, I sort of forgot that this is a fairy type raid. I got so carried away by the idea that this is Finizen that I didn't even realize that this is the wrong typing. I think it'll be fine though. We can just brute force it with discharge, even with the fighting type being a little weak. I mean, worst case scenario, we just do things again. Um, that didn't do any damage. We have, we avoided their attack too, though. So I guess we'll try this again. The fairy type terrestrialize is always so scary for some reason, and the rest of the team is doing some good damage. They are paralyzed, so let's just try this again. Here we go, discharge, and I think we'll be able to get rid of it, right? Maybe. Why is the health bar broken again? Sometimes it just sort of glitches out because it has less health than that. Yeah, see, like it had a ton of health, but it didn't really. Yeah, it just glitches out sometimes. Anyways, a pretty easy Terra battle then. So we'll catch this. Oh, not with the quick ball. That's not what I meant to do. It should be fine. But I don't know. I guess we'll see if that actually counts as a catch. We'll break out of this. I don't think it will. But either way, that'll be some, you know, three-star battle worth of experience candies and feathers, which is always super good. There we go. Come on. Is it a catch? Yes, it is. So our second fin has been caught in the span of a few minutes. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so that one cleared. Let's go over here and actually use the right typing just in case this one's a little bit more difficult. But this is yet another fairy terror raid. These are a lot of fun to grind out. Whoa, it's Raichu. Okay, so I don't know. Like The problem is I don't really have too many things that are good against fairy type. That's what we really struggled with before. Like steel, I think is good and poison is. So I guess our best bet here is Talonflame. It might not work out. The last time we tried a four star battle. Oh no, wait, this is psychic. That's not even. Yeah, okay, wait a minute. Before I get this mixed up, it's Psychic type, right? Not Fairy. Um, then maybe Masquerade would be fine. It has a Dark type move. I'm pretty certain. Let's try this, let's try this. If, you know, if I learn the hard way, I learn the hard way. But a four star battle, if we could win this, that'd be gigantic. So we get Raichu, which I don't think we've caught so far. We haven't beat a four star battle yet, so I really want to give this one my awe. Okay, here it is. It's Raichu. It's Psychic. I don't know why I thought it was Fairy, because it's like, you know, this one's sort of like a more of like a darkish red, I don't know, but the pink and the red, they look sort of similar. 
I guess it's more of like a magenta. Yeah, but like you can see when I'm just thinking about the colors. That's how I usually, in my mind, think about it. But I think Dark Pulse would be better than U-Turn because, you know, one thing, it's going to be a high chance of critical. It's also the same type of attack bonus. That's still a thing. It's super effective, but it doesn't do too much damage. It is a little concerning, but I don't think they can do too much. So they'll be able to paralyze us, which sort of sinks, but hopefully that doesn't kick in too much. They are paralyzing more of us, but come on, let's just keep going. Oh geez, there goes more Nuzzle. It's not a very damaging move though. We are lowering their health more and more, and I think we will try to Terrasalize here. I don't think it'll make our attack any weaker, you know, so. I mean, I could also try, it's just normally effective. Would this do more damage? It's asleep right now though, so maybe I shouldn't be messing with this too much. Let's see. Uh, hard to tell. Ooh, something did a lot of damage, but we're all attacking at once. It is still snoozing, so let's just keep taking this opportunity as it uses electric terrain while it's asleep. Okay. The electric energy, oh, this is their shield. So this starts at four star and above, I'm assuming, where we also have to break through their shield, but with how things are going right now, I think we can handle it. There we go. I mean, it's still a lot of work to do, but we're not even halfway through our time. So hopefully we can just keep this up. Now might be a good time to cheer. Also, go all out, this will up our attack damage. I think this is the best opportunity to do this so that we can really start damaging them down as much as possible. Um, right, she's using Nuzzle against us, but we're still, we still have more than half of our health at the moment. So let's just Dark Pulse right here. Ooh, and it's doing a lot more now, so I think that was a good cheer. It looks like the, the computer um, trainers won't use cheers. So it's all up to us in that way. Let's use Dark Pulse. Maybe I should have healed us. Ooh, come on, we're so close though. We are so very close. I think we're just fine with brute forcing the rest of this. But here comes another shield. Right, just to come to the onslaughts. Never mind. Ooh, this is our chance. Come on, guys. I hope that paralyzation doesn't kick in now. Wait, not this move. Dark Pulse is what I mean. Right here, come on. Huge damage coming in, and there it is. We've defeated our first four-star terror raid, and for a brand new Pokemon, too. I'm th I think, I don't think we've caught Raichu. We've caught Pichu and Pikachu, but not Raichu. So let's throw that Pokeball and hope that this is a good catch. It's dazed, just sort of dancing around a little bit. Even when Raichu is unconscious, it is adorable. Come on, this would be a huge catch. And we'll probably get tons of rewards for it too. Here's hoping. There we go. And we got it. Raichu was caught. Fantastic. And look at all the stuff we get here. We have experience candy M, experience candy L, and plenty of other things. So I'll definitely take a look at some of that. But really nice rewards. Number 75, Raichu, the mouse Pokemon is electric type. If the electric pouches in its cheeks become fully charged, both ears will stand straight up. <laughs> That's cool. So there we go, another terror raid done. I think we'll go for one more off in the distance, but look at that right there. Really, really good. So we'll go for that one. If I see any other new Pokemon along the way, I'll certainly you know, try to figure that out. Have we gotten Venonat? We have. That's good. We found a you know a good way to fill the time, even though the you know, the initial mission for today's episode was a bit short. Oh, we got Kamala, which I've missed out on several chances to catch this thing. So hopefully we can do it here. It's yawn and it's sleepy. If we just throw a quick ball, I would hope it'd be a quick catch. Then we'll have to find out. We have 17 of them left. Come on. Ah, oh, come on. Why is Kamala? So difficult to catch. I can't attack it here because it'll be a one hit takedown, guaranteed. Even if we use a weaker move, it's just we're too strong. So we'll throw another quick ball. And it's gonna jump out right away. So it doesn't like the quick balls very much. It's gonna use slam again. So there's nothing you can really do here to damage us quickly. We are asleep, but I'm not really concerned about that. We didn't plan on attacking or anything. We will do a, um, a nest ball for now. Because once again with this one, it's my last one. The lower the level of the Pokemon, the easier the catch. So I really hope this works. If not, I might try running and throwing another quick ball. But that's the catch for us, so we're fine. So Kamala was finally caught. Jeez, lots of work.
Okay then, so number 315, Kamala the Drowsing Pokemon, is a normal type. A potent anesthetic can be made by diluting Kamala's drool. This anesthetic was used for surgeries in the past. Gotcha, that's pretty intense. So glad we got that one. That goes right there. We still need to get Oranguru and Simeon. There are some trainers out this way, but this one I definitely don't think we've battled. Squawkabilly. Oh, is our is our Palma still sleeping, by the way? What powers our flying taxis? Squawkabilly's plucky spirit. I hope they're not, but they might be. We're challenged by Cabby Pablo. We have Squawkabilly, what do you know? Let's see, is Palmont still snoozing? Oh, they are, so that might be a bit of a problem. I think we'll just switch Pokemon to, um, I don't think we'll have anything else to super fit. We have Ice Punch, so yeah, we'll just do Floatzel. Floatzel's Ice Punch will be plenty enough. All right, so they'll just use Quake Attack. We'll use Ice Punch, and then after this, I think, like I said, we're just gonna focus on the next Terror Raid and probably be done there. It's been a lot of fun you know, going through these, and we got a lot of new Pokemon, so I'm happy about that. It definitely seems like, you know, with each area we're going to, there's more Pokemon we call, have caught than there are Pokemon we haven't, so that's a really good sign. What if we do Cabby Pablo? What spirit, I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm glad you do. So let's grab that right there, the Grappa Berry. Did you know that the wild squawk ability of the same color tend to flock together? I have noticed that. Anything new here, just more Lit Leos and stuff. We got the evolution of Lit Leo, didn't we? Um, Terror Raid Battle, whoa, it's the evolution of the uh, Giraffe Rig. I don't know if we've caught this or not. It's an ice type, so I definitely want to have, oh, actually, this is where it gets a little tough, right? Because ice type, fire type would be good against that, but ice is also good against flying, right? So maybe uh, Talon Flame wouldn't be the best thing? I guess we'll have to think about it. So the good news is that Fighting is also good against ice, so we don't have to worry about it too much because you know lightning really doesn't play a factor in ice at all. So we'll just go into the palm out. We'll use that you know close combat multiple times, and that should be good enough. So here we are against the ice type version of this draft rig. Like I said, I'm pretty sure we haven't caught this one. We've definitely battled against it, but it is such a cool Pokemon regardless. I want to mine another one. Look at how huge it is. It is way up there. So for Ridgeraff, let's go ahead with. Um, I guess just yeah, close combat, and hopefully five times will be enough, because if not, I'll be in a bit of trouble, but right now we'll just hit it with everything we got. That was super effective. And that's gonna lower its health some more. I think what we'll do is we'll use it two or three times here, get it to bring up its shield. Ooh, but it can be super effective in return. Oh my goodness, because it still has this, you know, giraffe rig moves. We'll hope that everybody else can do some good damage too. It looks like it's gonna be a little bit sort of uh, whittling away at it, but we're already more than, or almost more than halfway through. So that's a really good sign that we can do something here. It's going right for me and for good reason, I suppose. It did stomp on us, but now it is doing the energy. So this is where I might want to just work through the shield a little bit, lose negative effects from itself, or we could heal here, but I'm the only one really damaged. So let's go ahead and just tell everybody to go all out. It's asleep too. So that'll increase everybody's damage so that hopefully we can deal with this a little bit better. I'll see how much damage the shield my um, close combat does. Because that's the only issue is that it doesn't have a lot of power points. I feel like I should probably use something on it. Oh no. Use Calm Mind. That makes his attack rise. It's a little bit scary. And it's defense. Yeah, it's not enough. I think I need to save that for when we break the shield. So let's use some other moves in the meantime. If I could use Nuzzle now, that might be a good idea. But it is going to attack us, I think, again, which is to be expected. We have this tiny little sliver of health left, so while we're waiting, I hope the rest of them are able to attack, because we still have a ton of time here. Come on, team. You got it. Do something. Don't just stand there. I guess they're waiting for me. Okay, come on. Here comes Plamont. We're going to... Just use Discharge for now. It should still be decently, you know, powerful. It's something. But we have still so much more to work through here. But it's definitely tough, and oh my gosh, that's so much. Um, this is where I get a bit nervous. I think if we were to try this again, I should get some extra power points on um, Close Combat that might be a better solution. 
Because we're out again. I might just have to use close combat here. We just don't have too many uses of it left. Oh no, but the time just jumped down a lot there. Just sort of, that was weird. It's gonna nullify the ability changes. It was so much time. No, come on guys, attack, do something. And they, they just wait for us. Sort of silly. This is where it gets, you know, a little too difficult where you really need real life teammates, I think, instead of the computer ones. But I think at this point, we're just gonna go for it. We will um, do close combat like this. It's gonna attack us soon, I'm sure, but that's almost that broken. Come on, guys. Come on, help me out here. If they can all just go for it. They're using Twin Beam against us, though, so, and that does do a lot of damage. And they get to attack twice, which is insane. Ah. Uh, so I don't know if we'll have too much of a chance to do everything we need to here. Because we were hit two times, they were, yeah, they hit it two times. It's gathering dark energy, and I think it's just gonna knock us out of here. So I'll try again, but first we'll use our PowerPoint improvement. Like, I think we have some items that should improve the amount of PowerPoints that weapon has, or that ability. We'll see. Okay, so before we do anything with the PowerPoints with Palma, I'm going to try this really quickly. We're gonna go against it with Talonflame because I did notice it was only using Psyche type moves. Just because it is ice to rastalize doesn't always mean it has um, ice type moves. So maybe I could just do this and it'll be fine. We also have stealing, but this one should be more damaging and it has the you know type attack bonuses. And it does do like not as much damage as Palmat Singh did, but we can do this way more times. So we'll have to see if it ends up working out better, but I'm gonna try this really quickly and we'll just see. So it's paralyzed for now, and that could end up being an issue. I don't think there's much I can do about it. Yeah, Talonflame can't move here because it's paralyzed, but it is getting burnt and stuff. And look at how much damage is coming out from our teammates this time. So I feel like that's a little bit better, but Talon's flames, flame body is gonna keep it burned again. Okay, so yeah, there's not too much I can do about the paralysis, I don't think. I mean, maybe I could cheer, but it'll just paralyze this again. Either way, the heat wave is doing some good work. It's definitely not as much as before, but this is more consistent, so I think that'll add up over time. They are trying the psychic moves against, it's not doing as much, so they don't seem to have any ice moves at all. So that's some really good advantages for us. See, so keep using psychic, it doesn't do too much to us. So here comes the shield, and this is where things do get a little bit difficult, a little bit complicated, but I think we'll be fine. I, I'm going to cheer us so that we do, um a little bit more damage as a team. But with that done, we'll hopefully be able to get rid of it. So cheer, go all out. I think it lasts a little bit, you know? Set the all your allies to cheer, go all out. Yeah, all our allies attack and special attack for us. So it doesn't seem like much, but we need anything we can take to actually defeat them. So it comes with a heat wave. And we still have a ton more time left. I feel like that's what's sort of the advantage this time. We're still paralyzed, but slowly not working out a ton. Ah, uh, but we're out. That's our first time getting knocked out, though. So we only have to be out of this for five seconds, and then it's 10, and then it's 15. I think it just goes by intervals of five each time. So now we're back at full health. I could heal our team here soon. We might end up needing it. I think I'll go for one more attack, because now we're not paralyzed. Super effective, but yeah, now we really need to heal. They're doing Thunder Wave against us, now we're all paralyzed. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, this is, we're all super low on health, this is the time to cheer for health. But now I'm starting to run out of like health faster and faster, and time too, so it's just really stressful. Cheer, heal up. Let's see if that works. And if this doesn't, I just, I'm not, not sure if we're just quite at the health to actually beat this or the level two. It's really difficult, this, this specific setup. Okay, it's using Psychic. If it didn't have Psychic type moves, I feel like we'd just be able to destroy it with Palmop pretty quick, but because it does, it, it's definitely challenging. But I really wanna try, so. If we could just break through the shield. So I think that's what we'll just try to boot brute force for a little bit. Come on, keep going for more. We're almost there. It's just, it's just a little bit more is all we need. It's been so difficult. Once we break this shield, we'll be fine. So maybe cheering isn't helping me too much. Maybe it's just not worth the time it takes to actually do it. Because you know everything is when it comes to Pokemon, when you move anything, it always takes so much time. So come on, one more. 
Ah, oh, poor Paralyze is the worst possible time for that. Come on, come on. This is rough. Let's hit two times there. Gonna try again, though. That shield is almost broken. There isn't much time left, I know. But I couldn't move because I was paralyzed. Oh, that is so annoying. I wish I, I wish I had a held item or something that maybe prevented that, but I don't think I do. And now we're out. So I don't think there's any way we can win this one now. It's just a little bit too late. So I'll try a couple more times. I think I'll keep grinding this one to see if we get it because I really do want it. But geez, it's been ridiculous. Yeah, so we're out of this one. So I'm boosting the power points of uh, close combat just a few times, even up to seven or eight can be a big difference maker. So we'll do that. Um, when it comes to everything else, we have like HP up, which will up the HP of a Pokemon. I wish I could see just from here which HP, what Pokemon. Okay, I can do this though. Who has like the least amount of HP? So far it looks like it's gonna be Doxbun. So maybe they should have the HP boost or maybe I should give it to my most health points Pokemon to really just sort of complement whatever they have, you know? That's sort of what I, I really don't know how to focus with. Maybe I'll do a little bit of both. I mean, I only have one of each, so I'll give one to Oink alone. It won't have any effect. How does this work then? I thought I'd use it, right? What about you? Why doesn't that have any effect? Am I supposed to just give it to them? I don't think so. Let's try protein. This will do boost attack. Why? I, I don't really know how these work. <laughs> okay, what about these ones? Apparently giving it to them doesn't really help, but maybe yeah, I really don't know how these work at all. Because <laughs> apparently just using it doesn't work. But apparently holding it also doesn't help a lot of you let me know, so I'm not really sure how those work. And maybe I have to do it at the TM machine or something like that. So I'm not seeing too much else I can do here besides you know giving them experience candy to really boost their, their powers, which is something I plan on doing anyway. So let's try experience candy M. I want to give a couple of that to Town Flame. Maybe we'll do like five. Will that be enough for level 65? It will be, awesome. So. Okay, we got Roost here. What is Roost? The user lands and rests his body. This move restores the HP, the user's HP by up to half of its max HP. I'll consider it. I don't know if I need that too much right now. But maybe it'd be better than Tailwind? I don't know, I feel like I'd rather just use a potion in those situations. Either way, um, and we only need a tiny bit of experience left for Palma to get to level 64. So I'll give them maybe seven experience candies here. That's enough for it, very cool. So that's some good stuff. I guess we'll just try some things with this and see where it goes. Okay, this is our last chance. We have about no time left. Can we do it with like a little sliver of time left? We did it! Wow, that was so close. It's so ridiculous that they just sort of just stand around when I'm reviving or something like that. I'm glad it worked out. Oh my gosh, that was a lot of work. Okay, so let's go for it. It was so lucky that it worked out that way. Let's get this for Rigerath. This one was a ton of work to get. That was definitely one of our toughest um, terrestrialized terror raids, whatever you want to call it, that we've actually won in. So super duper cool to get that. And got it. So there we go. We also get Fridge Raff added to our Pokedex, I'm pretty sure. But look at all this extra stuff we get here. Tons of rewards. I'm happy to see it. Okay, so number 193, Ferrigiraffe, the long neck Pokemon, is a normal psychic type. The hardened head from the tail protects the head of the main body as Ferrigiraffe whips its long neck around to headbutt enemies. So interesting. So I like to see it. Does a new Ferrigiraffe evolution? This wasn't a part of the game before, I don't think. So yeah, cool to see that. So it gets right to our box and into our Pokedex as well. Very cool. So there we go, we spent a lot of time in today's episode exploring around getting some different things done with Terror Raids after defeating Arvin. We'll be following him into the Great Crater at some point, but for next episode, we're gonna be meeting up with, uh, what was it, Cassiopeia and battling them back at the school. But for right now, that is gonna wrap it up for today's episode of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.